pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We thank you as we uh, come closer to uh, Thanksgiving. You told us to enter your gates with thanksgiving and enter your courts with praise. And so we do that today, Lord. We're coming in uh, with thanksgiving on our hearts. We're thanking you, Lord, for the miracles that we've seen this week. And Lord, we have seen absolute miracles. We've seen uh, things turn and change. Things uh, lean more towards righteousness in this nation. And Father God, now I pray that the churches will lean more towards righteousness too. As, Lord, we see an unveiling of your power like we have never seen before in these coming days. Lord, we're going to say at the end of the day, at the end of this season, that my God, my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all I could ask or think. And we pray today, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. And let your ways be known in the church and in the country in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that we can pray today. We pray for this service. Lord, you're going you're gonna to say some things to our hearts, speak it to our hearts. And Lord, it's up to us to listen. It's up to us to activate our wills. And it's up to listen, up to, for us to listen to you. And Lord, that's what we want to do. We want to heed what you have to say. Lord, we wouldn't have come here on a Sunday morning if we didn't want to listen to you. If we didn't want to hear your voice. Lord, we could have stayed in bed this morning. But Lord, we didn't. Your people have come out. Your people have come to worship you. Your people have come to declare that Jesus is Lord over this nation, over his church, over his bride. Lord, we do that today. We declare, Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. You are what the Father was looking for to place on this earth. And Lord, we worship you and we thank you. All our problems are in your hands. All our situations are in your hands. If they're financial, they're in your hands. Lord, if they're spiritual, you can change it. And we're here to listen to you today. And Lord, to have the mind of Christ. And so we pray for one another here today. We pray against all illness in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, right now that, Lord, every, every infirm spirit would leave in Jesus' name. Yes, and that, Lord, you would manifest healing throughout this building today. You would manifest your strength. You said those that wait on you, Lord, will renew their strength. And we ask you to manifest strength. We all need that. And we're believing you for it, Lord, today, in this service today. You said, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Lord, we do that today in Jesus' name. We have an abundance of blessing that has come from your hand. And Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for all the answers to prayer, the jobs that you found for people, Lord, the healings that you provided this week, and Lord, especially the good news that we have, Father God, in this nation, that Lord, you are turning, you're turning everything around, and you're turning the hearts of the children back to the fathers, and the hearts of the fathers back to the children, and Lord, we just give you glory today, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. In 1 Kings 18. And the showdown is basically against prophets. But they weren't God's prophets. They were the prophets of Baal. And you may say, well, Baal, that was thousands of years ago. No, there's a Baal revival going on right now. Amen. There is a Baal revival. Baal, Baal was the god of war. Are you with me? Are you listening? Amen. 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 There, there have been, listen, there have been people in leadership, in government, that this is all they want. They follow Baal. Baal is alive and well today, but he is being judged and his system is being judged today. So as we go back in the Old Testament, we find a, a paradigm that points to the day and age that we live in. J uh, Jerusalem has gone through it, Israel has gone through it, and the United States has gone through it. Amen? So we need some clarity to understand what, what we're going through. 
both Israel, and I'm going back to uh, last Sunday night, we had a prayer meeting. Justin Mader stood up, met some of you know Justin Mader, and he prayed, and he prayed for America, and he prayed for Israel, and he called them, and we all, I mean, we all lifted up a shout, I think. He called us both covenant nations. Because we are. We're under covenant with God and that comes through Israel and it comes to America. So we are a covenant nation. Who's the covenant with? God. 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 Amen. Not with Baal. And so we've got a whole nation that's going in Baal's direction. And, and we have God's people that are very, very quiet right now. That are very, very settled in to their pew life. Amen. Amen. And, and, and God is going to start fighting the prophets of Baal. He's going to start fighting that system. He's going to start bringing that system down. And he used this paradigm, I call it. It's a pattern in Scripture in the Old Testament to show us what's going to happen today. Amen? And God has all kinds of paradigms, all kinds of patterns in the Old Testament. Whenever a prophet prophesied, it was always a pattern. It wasn't just going to happen that one time. It was probably going to happen again, over and over again. So Elijah going up on Mount Carmel. And by the way, my sermon title is, Meet Me on Mount Carmel. Amen? Praise the Lord. Isn't that, doesn't that sound nice? Amen? The church needs, we all need to meet there. On Mount Carmel. Carmel. Not Carmel. Carmel. That was a Freudian slip. Okay? Mount Carmel. And uh, this country is going through a Mount Carmel moment. So 1 Kings 18 says this. After a long time, a long time. Listen, church, this, this nation has been going through something for a long time. Amen? We have been experiencing some disappointments for a long time. Right? God's timing. Hallelujah. We're waiting on God's timing. But it's been a long time. All right? You got it. In the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. So something was going on for three years. And I want to tell you what was going on. There was a drought in the land. Not only was Baal the god of war, but Baal was also the god of rain. And for some reason... You know, even though he was raining, R-E-I-G-N, he wasn't R-A-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-G. He wasn't raining. There was no... And that was his job. But Elijah the prophet had a showdown early with Baal, with Baal, and he said, there will be no rain. And there was no rain for three years. So God told Elijah, go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. So Elijah went to present himself to King Ahab. Now King Ahab was the one with his wife Jezebel that brought in the alternate worship. The, the worship of, of, of paganism. The worship of the pagan god of Baal. And they set up their whole system. Ahab and Jezebel set up their whole governmental system on Baal being God. Not God being God, but Baal being God. And I want to tell you something. In a lot of ways, our government, our, our nation parallels that kind of pagan worship. And God is bringing it down. We have a president right now who goes on national TV, who goes on Twitter, and goes a lot of other places and says this, that things are changing. That, that globalistic nonsense is not going to reign. We are nationalists. Amen? Hallelujah. We are nationalists because we have a covenant with God. Hallelujah. 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 We have a covenant with God, not with Baal. We don't want that nonsense anymore. Amen? This is not a political rally. This is a sermon, so I'll get back to my sermon. Okay? The founders of our country wanted it this way. The founders of our country wanted nationalism. They didn't want this globalistic pagan type of religion and Baal worship which we see all over the world right now, all over the world with children being murdered, children being trafficked. This is all that system and that system I'm here to tell you today, God's giving you clarity, it's coming down and the powers that we have elected are bringing it down and quickly. And God has put his hand on those powers, amen? 
Who follows the Baals are government, entertainment, media, family, education, and yes, church, religion. There's a lot of churches today into Baal worship. A lot of churches today say, covering it over with Jesus and saying, well, Jesus wouldn't, Jesus wouldn't restrict a man and a man from getting married. <laughs> oh, yes, he would. <laughs> well, that's not Jesus. Oh, yes, it is Jesus. At least the one I read about in the Bible. Right? Amen? Amen. So we've got, we've got uh, the systems of Baal today, just like they were way back when, a few thousand years ago. Systems of Baal in operation in government, entertainment, media, family, education, and religion. Amen? Uh, if, if you don't want to call it a system, call it political correctness. If there is something today that you're being challenged on because you're not being politically correct, it's probably Baal talking. Uh, strike that from the record. It is Baal talking. Verse 16. We're still in Second King, or 1 Kings 18. Verse 18. Obadiah went to meet Ahab. Obadiah was an assistant of Ahab. Uh, he was one of God's prophets, but he was being kind of manipulated a little bit by Ahab, and he was very afraid to go meet Elijah because if the news he would have to bring back would, might put his own life in danger. So Obadiah is a little bit afraid right here. He says, Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And when he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? <laughs> Who was troubling Israel? Was it Elijah? Or was it the guy that was saying, You're the troubler? Yeah. Amen. One of, the, one of the techniques of Baal and government is it's your fault. You did it. You're the troubler. You're the one. It's called projection. Amen? So while we have a government today, many seats in government today that are saying it's the church's fault, it's the church's fault, who's doing the finger pointing? The government. Amen? Amen. It's projection. Right? The Democrats with the Republicans. Oh, it's you guys. No, you guys are causing... No, it's Trump's rhetoric that's causing all the violence. No, it's not. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the blue people. Amen? The blue man group that's doing it. They're just projecting it on us. You see? This past election, all right? We didn't win the House. Did you see any protests? No. Did you see buildings destroyed? Buildings destroyed? Limousines burned? No, you didn't. Okay. So verse 18, Elijah says this, good for Elijah too. He said, I have not made trouble for Israel. Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commandments and have followed the Baals. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel. That's where I got the title, meet me on Mount Carmel. That's what Elijah said. And bring 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Astra." That was Jezebel's prophets. So they had lots of prophets, didn't they? But it didn't profit them at all, right? Really? All right? Who eat at Jezebel's table. So Jezebel and Ahab probably had a big food bill, okay? But hear, hear what Elijah's doing, amen? Elijah, all right, of Israel, the prophet of Israel is challenging. He's challenging what is going on in the world. Amen? That's the clarity I want you to see. God's people are called to speak to power. I'm trying to get, give people clarity and educate people to that. God's people are called to speak to power. And when you speak to power, amen, you are in the will of God, and yes, you will be evangelizing. Yes, you will. Yes. Amen? Our evangelism lately has been sappy. And we need, we need some backbone in our evangelism. Amen? Bringing Jesus into every avenue, every area of the country, into government, into entertainment, into media, into family, into education, into religion, back into the church where it belongs. Amen? And we, the church, need to speak that. And it's not hate. They're going to project and say again, hate, hate, you're a hater, you're a hater. Who's pointing a finger? They're the hater. Who's They're the, the accuser haters. of the brethren? Amen. The accuser of the brethren. That's Satan's tactic, right? Amen. You guys are getting sharp. Praise God. All right. 
So if following the bales, which was the last slide, was government, entertainment, media, family, uh, education, religion, then wavering be to it, between two opinions is the church. All right? I told you, these are paradigms. These are patterns that are happening right now. So here, verse 20 says, So Ahab sent word throughout all of Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? The church right now is in the valley of decision. The church right now is, is, is working against, a lot of times, the things that are going on that God wants to bring out in the world. Amen? So he says, how long are you going to waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal is God, follow Him. So how's it, and if Baal is God, how is the, uh, how's the uh, not having rain working for you? <laughs> Amen? Amen? So, listen, church. Is this not gonna, it's not going to do us any good. Just like Phyllis was saying about naming your seed. Amen? There's a lot of things we need to name today. A lot of things. We need to put the name of Jesus Christ back on our church. Not our church, but the church of Jesus Christ. The whole church. The name of Jesus Christ. Who's going to speak to the church? The government? No, no we're going to speak to the church. Amen? We're going to speak to it. And where it's out of line, we're going to tell it. Get it back in line. Get back where God wants you. Amen? He said, if the Lord be God, follow Him. But this is what the people said. They said nothing. Amen? They said not a word. They spoke not a word. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are called to speak to power. We are called by God Almighty, just like our president is, and the church should be right behind Him. The church as prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers should be standing right alongside of Him. Elijah challenged the whole priesthood, the state religion. He challenged the whole priesthood. And we need to be challenging that priesthood. Amen? If you don't think it's a priesthood, if you don't think that those government officials have their own pagan religion, read their writings and you'll see. Read how many of them say, we are establishing a more, a more pagan religion. They will even come out and say that, church. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Amen? They will. And they're, they're, uh, there's a secret society in the world today. We have an unofficial state religion today. And we are called to speak against it. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Since then Elijah said to them, I, Am I the only one of the Lord's prophets left? And that was a misstatement. He wasn't one of the only prophets of the Lord left. Because if you go to 1 Kings 19 verse 18, God told him, I have yet, I have reserved in Israel 7,000 prophets who have not bowed a knee to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. Amen? So we've got a majority, a great majority in our ranks that are out to speak against this thing. Amen? And praise God, it's good to be able to hear about this after an election. Amen? To understand what we're battling and what we're fighting and how God is working for us and how He's going to turn things around even if we don't think it worked out the way we wanted it to. Amen? Amen. I hear people today saying, those people that prophesied a red wave, those prophets that prophesied that need to apologize no, they don't. They were right. Amen? God's not finished yet. I said God's not finished Amen. yet. Amen. Amen. Amen? There are going to be empty seats in the house, and they're going to be filled, and they're going to be filled red, not blue. Oh, yeah. Election fraud. I mean, we can speak for hours on that. We're not going to today, but we can speak for hours on that. Uh, they're trying. They're pulling out all the stops. Baal is desperate. Baal is desperate because he knows he's losing, and we can see the light right now. We can see it. Amen. He's losing. Praise Amen. God. So Elijah wasn't the only prophet left, but Baal has four hundred and fifty prophets. 
So get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophet choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood but not set fire to it and I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood but not set fire to it. So equal playing field right there. Verse 24. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. Hallelujah. God is answering by fire in the land right now. Amen. I said God's answering by fire. I got another slide in just a minute that I'll show you what the fire means. Amen. Then all the people, finally, all God's people spoke up and said, well, yeah, what you say is good. They finally woke up a little bit. Amen. At least they're saying, well, yeah, that sounds good. All right. All right. That sounds good. Not, all right. We're coming. We're coming with our swords strapped on our sides and we're going to be ready to battle. But I guess any... Response is a good response. All right? And praise God. In case you don't understand something about fire. This is from Malachi chapter 3 about God's timing. Verse 2, Malachi 3, 2 says, But who can endure the day of His coming? Who could stand when He appears? So can Baal stand? The answer is no. For He will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. What does soap do? Cleans. Cleans, right? God's cleaning house. Hallelujah. God's going to burn out the chaff. He's going to clean house. He says in verse 3, He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify uh, the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. That's us. That's the church. Amen. We are New Testament Levites. Glory to God. Yes. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. No more of this Baal garbage. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord. As in days gone by, as in former years. That's the plan right there. That's the plan. God is cleaning house. God is cleaning the nation. God is cleaning the church. God is cleaning Hollywood. God is cleaning. He's cleaning church. Hallelujah. You should be excited about that. He's going to clean the schools. He's going to clean the schools. That's right. He's going to clean our, our local government. He, he's going to clean everywhere. Amen? We're going to call him Mr. Clean. Hallelujah. Glory. God is on the move. The timing's everything. Amen? So, uh, 1 Kings 18, verse 25. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first. Since there are so many of you, call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So, the bull, uh, so they took the bull and uh, they prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal. From morning until noon. That's a long time. Baal, answer us. They shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. You know why? Because God was in the room. Because God was in the room. Amen? May that, that Baal spirit dumb and deaf. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the more we're in the world, the more we're dealing with the world, the quieter that spirit is going to get, church. And they danced around the altar that they had made. So they, you know, didn't hear anything or anything. Well, let's just get up and dance. Guess we got nothing else. Let's just get up and dance. Well, it wasn't going to work. Amen? So God is on the move. Praise God. Mine says they leapt on the altar. They actually jumped on it. They jumped on the altar, yeah. So, uh, you know, they were desperate, right? Isn't it, isn't it awesome? To, to be able to, to think in your mind that you're going to be able to see those that have had so much power and those that have had so much all of a sudden have nothing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And there's only going to be one person, one thing, one entity, whatever, that's going to get glory and it's going to be God Himself. Amen? Now here's where the warfare comes in. If you, if you don't think, if you don't think uh, that, that today those in power have a pagan religion, have all kinds of rituals and things like that that they do, amen, I'm going to sell you swamp property in Florida. I'm serious. Because they do. And here's how you know it. Verse 27. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god, small g, notice. Perhaps he is deep in thought, or busy, or traveling. Maybe he's sleeping and must be awakened. 
So they shouted louder, and then they slashed themselves with swords and with spears. Listen, that's ritualistic. That's satanic, that's ritualistic, okay? That's to get their pagan god to do something which he's not going to do. That was their custom until their blood flowed. Let me tell you something. There is blood flowing right now. Demonic, pagan, ritualistic blood flowing right now. Abortion. Did I say that? Yes. Things like that, but things in secret places that you and I are not allowed to go that are happening right now in this world. It says, verse 29, then they passed and they continued their frantic prophesying. Let me tell you something. These dark pagans, they can prophesy too. So that's how you know it's religious. Amen? We're fighting a religious spirit. Praise God. And we, can, we have the victory. Of course you know that. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Dead silence from Baal. It wasn't working anymore. That's where we're going, church. It's, it's not going to work anymore. Amen. What God does is going to work. Hallelujah. All the little of those that resist it. Yeah, but God is, is, is going to have center stage now. You're going to see it very quickly. Then Elijah said to the people, I want to finish reading his story. This is a, a, a picture from 1 Peter. Okay, I want you to realize that. Verse 30. Elijah said to the people, come here to me. They came to him. He repaired the altar of the Lord. That's significant. This altar is and how he's repairing things. And this is how he's repairing things. Elijah, verse 31, took 12 stones... One for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. Notice, he built an altar with 12 stones that were symbolic of the 12 tribes of Israel, one of the covenant nations. And again, God is rebuilding an altar. It's his church, hallelujah, in America, which is another covenant nation. Glory to God. Amen. Was it also through remembering God, the history of God? Was it also the... Yeah, he, he took the 12 stones and remembered. Remembered. He was right. remembering. Yeah, he's calling it back. Amen. Yeah, really so uh, he's uh, called... What he's doing here, or what we have to do, is call back our history. Remember. Amen. Amen. You should have preached this message. we got to call back our history. Amen. The church has to call back its history. Mm -hmm. It has to call back to what Martin Luther and, and Billy Graham and, you know, on and on and on. I mean, that's what we're about. We've got to call back our history into existence. He's, God is rebuilding the altar. And it, it is. It's an altar of remembrance. Absolutely. Elijah took 12 stones. Verse 32. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he dug a trench around it large enough to, to hold two seals of seed. Verse 33, he arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, laid it on the wood, and then he said to them, watch this. This is, this is he's augmenting now. He's, he's really getting creative, okay? He says, God's going to do such a big miracle, I'm, I'm actually going to do things that in the natural would stop it from happening, okay? This is what he did. He says, Fill four, four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood, okay? So if you're going to light a match and throw it on the, on the wood, it's not going to burn, right? Do it again, he said. And then they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered. And they did it a third time. And the water ran down into the altar and even filled the trench, okay? So there was a lot of water. Fire and water don't mix very well, right? So if this happens... It's going to be God. And you're going to know it's God because Baal's not able to do this. Amen? Now, 1 Peter 2, 4, and 5 say, says this. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. To be a holy and a priesthood, offering of spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, who is the cornerstone. What is he talking about in 1 Peter 2, 4, and 5? He's talking about the church. Being, again, that stone altar, praise God, that Elijah was raising up. 
It's time, folks. It's time. It's God's timing. This paradigm is in Scripture to show us where we are right now. Do you know where you are right now? The answer is yes. We are right here. These are the days of Elijah. That's why Robin Mark wrote that song a long time ago. Amen? He wrote it because he knew God has timing. And God's timing is that these are the days of Elijah. We're going we're gonna to see the same things happen again. Last, last verse here. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed. Watch what he prayed. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are a God in Israel and that I am your servant and I have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me. Baal's not talking. Baal's backed out. Baal's on the run. Hallelujah. You need to learn to say that in your house. Baal's on the run. Glory to God. He says, I am your servant. I've done all these things at your command. Verse 37. Answer me, Lord. Answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Amen. Amen. Why is God doing this? Why is He doing this right now? Why is He changing things? Verse 37, read it. This is it. He says that these people will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Amen. Amen. That is revival. Praise God. That's why some of you need to pray, pray and, and believe God. You know, church, let me tell you something. If, if, if Jesus Christ is Lord of this, at least of His church, and His church is influencing the nations, our children won't have to go to war anymore. That's Baal's plan. Amen. If the government's done it, it's because it's been Baal's plan. I know we've liberated nations. I know we've liberated countries. But I also know that we've messed up some things. And it's because that Baal warlike spirit is in our government. And it wants to send people, our children, out to fight in wars that are only going to destabilize this nation. Come on, church. That's right. Amen. So they can have their orgies. That's right. They can have their orgies in the halls of our government. Because that's Baal worship. Because it's paganism. You want to know why? You want to know why? We're in such bad shape. Why people are, are experimenting with sex. Same sex, other sex, uh, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to get into what they're exploring today. It's because of that Baal spirit has been released on our nation. And God's people have the authority to drive it out. Amen. Amen. Just like Jeb Deborah drove out the iron chariots and the Canaanites. That's a paradigm in scripture that will never ever be replaced by anything else. And we can, we can drive it out. Yes, we can. Amen. Yes, we can. What happened in verse 38? Then the fire of the Lord, hallelujah, that holy fire, fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, and licked up the water in the trench. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Licked up the water in the trench. He didn't have to do that. And God says, I'm going I'm to take care of all this. Amen. You might be going to get rid of that water in the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. I'm telling you something, Jesus is, going, is doing something in this nation. Amen? Jesus is doing... And, and you know what? A lot of people are disappointed uh, with maybe the way the election went and this and that and the other thing. Listen, it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Somebody posted on Facebook, uh, we call it Election Day. Why is it take? Why is it election week or election month or whatever? It's taking them so long to count the votes. Amen. Uh, there's so many ways for us to get disappointed. So many ways. Listen, the enemy is just pulling stuff out and throwing stuff, and and, and he's scraping the bottom of the barrel right now because he knows God's going to win. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He knows God's going to win. Fell. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They cried. The Lord. Is God. Beloved, let me tell you something. Today, we live in a day. I want you to bow your heads.
Because I want to speak something over you today. I want to speak something over you today. Do you know the scripture said that the prophets of old were jealous of us who get to live in this day and get to see what they only could have imagined was happening. And we get to see it today. I believe the first thing that we need to do today is to stand up and say, God, forgive us for thinking, ever thinking, that we're in a time where he's not looking after us or he's not taking care of us. Oh, he's doing more than that, church. He is not just taking care of us. He's making things right for us. So, Father, I pray, first of all, that you'll forgive us for worrying about elections and worrying about, uh, Lord, whether we're going to make it or whatever. Lord, you're, you're actually creating a, another financing system in this nation right now. And so, Lord, we repent for even ever thinking that you weren't going to take care of us. You weren't going to supply our needs, that our money wasn't worth anything. Lord, you are restoring everything. So forgive us, Lord, right now. If you need to pray, if you've been worried, I want you to stand up right now. If you've been worried, I want you to stand. Come on, I know there are people here. Come on, stand up. If you've been worried, Father, we repent right now. Lord, this is an altar call. We repent and we thank you, Lord, that you are forgiving us right now for doubting you, for doubting you. Lord, we repent for not entering in. And thinking that, Lord, something else is going to happen, something bad is going to happen. Lord, you are transforming our entire world before our eyes. Can you say that in faith right now? Lord, you are transforming our world right before our eyes. Come on, I want to hear you say that again. Lord... Lord, you are transforming. You are transforming our world. Our world right before our eyes. Right before our eyes. Forgive us for not seeing it. Forgive us for not seeing it. Forgive us for listening to the media. Forgive us for listening to the media. Who's on the other side? Who's on the other side? And strengthen us now. And strengthen us now. In the holy word of God. In the holy word of God. To speak that word. To speak that word. To nations. To nations, to governments, to governments, to education, to education, to everywhere in this world, to everywhere in this world. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. To the glory of God the Father. The kingdoms of this world. The kingdoms of this world are becoming. Are becoming the kingdoms of our God. The kingdoms of our God. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I said a small prayer. And it occurred to me that each of my predecessors has had a similar moment. And I wondered if our prayers weren't very much the same, if not identical. We celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I. The armistice that began on the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month. And I wonder, in fact, if all Americans' prayers aren't the same as those I mentioned a moment ago. For all we can ever do for our heroes is remember them and remember what they did. And memories are transmitted through words. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, gray and gray hair. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. All we can do is remember. There's always someone who is remembering for us. No matter what time of year it is or what time of day, 
There are always people who come to this cemetery, leave a flag or a flower or a little rock on a headstone. And they stop, bow their heads, and communicate what they wished to communicate. I think sometimes of General Matthew Ridgway, who the night before D-Day, tossed sleepless on his cot and prayed <coughs> to the Lord and listened for the promise that God made to Joshua. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. We are surrounded today by the debt of our wars. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them, what they did, and why they had to be brave for us. All we can do is try to see that other young men never have to join them. Today as never before, we must pledge to remember the things that will continue the peace. Today as never before, we must pray for God's help in broadening and deepening the peace we enjoy. Let us pray for freedom and justice in a more stable world. And let us make a compact today with the dead. A promise in the words for which General Ridgway listened, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee.